43 in Washington, wow, 17 minutes before midnight and 17 minutes before my end of reigning with the quiet storm here at WHUR Radio. You didn't even have to have a radio in D.C. All you had to do was open the window. You couldn't help but hear the quiet storm. That's how popular it was. It was the air that D.C. breathed. The quiet storm was a nice slowdown where you can just listen to music and just kind of just uh, escape and just vibe out. For Melvin, the quiet storm was all about the music. It was not personality radio. It was all about his music. If Phyllis Hyman was on, Melvin was in love. <laughs> if Barbara Streisand was on, they done broke up. Melvin was very classy, suave. You know, he was just top shelf. And you felt that even if you never met him. He was so gracious and so sweet and I was just so smitten because he was so handsome and that smooth voice. <laughs> I mean, he was the quiet storm epitomized. He was an influencer before the day's meeting for that term. When you are with people every night, you create moods, <laughs> especially night moods. I've always worked morning, so I don't make babies. But Melvin was making babies at night. <laughs> How could that not uh, last in your memory forever? He was a part of your love life. Hi folks, I'm Pat Lawson Muse along with my colleague Tracy Wilkins and we've got an exciting new project to tell you about, to talk about uh, today. It's Tracy's special three-part series on a program that many of you may be familiar with if you listen to radio in Washington, The Quiet Storm. It's entitled Quiet Storm Melodies, Moods, and Mixes of Melvin Lindsay, who is the was the creator of The Quiet Storm. Tracy, this is, this is a three-part series. I can't wait to see it. I've talked to you about it. I know a little about it, but let's tell our viewers uh, what the series is all about. We're both longtime fans of The Quiet Storm. Melvin was my classmate at Howard University and a colleague uh, and former student intern, uh, as I was at WHUR FM Radio. So tell us about what motivated you to do this series on Melvin Lindsay and The Quiet Storm, which is well, a phenomenon. It is a phenomenon. And you can't go to urban radio markets without hearing some version of the quiet storm. And it started at WHUR 96.3 with Melvin Lindsay, who was given a shot to come in and fill in for another DJ. And it turned into this phenomenon um, that spread across the nation. And for Washingtonians, the quiet storm has a special place in our hearts. So I was raised to the quiet storm and went to sleep every night, listening to the quiet storm with my sister playing it on the radio and who wanted to get up in the middle of the night and walk across <laughs> and turn off the radio. So we just, you know, slow jamming was important in my household. And so I, I grew up being a fan of Melvin Lindsay and how he did what he did, which was done so masterfully in a way that very few have been able to copy. And I think everybody has tried, but his taste were so extraordinary and the music that he was drawn to. And I always say that he just, he taught us what we liked. He taught us that we love Gene Karn, that we love Phyllis Hyman, that we love Tina Marie and Luther Vandross and- some And Smokey Robinson. Artists. And you said what, Pat? And Smokey Robinson. And Smokey Robinson, right? The singer of the lead song, the song that started it all. So I have to say this was a passion project and huge, super huge shout out to the producer and photographer and editor and an unbelievable collaborator to Neil Gibson, who helped to put all of this together and just had this amazing vision for how we could tell this story for Melvin Lindsay, who died in 1992. There was a lot of work that had to go into doing this in addition to um, the interviews and finding the people who knew him and who could tell his story, talk about him. Mm -hmm. We also had to figure out how do we um, have the video and the pictures and the imagery to go along with his story. And so she was just masterful, masterful in figuring out how to do it. And I just, I am so excited for people to see this piece because it is 
beautiful, it's artistic, it's smart, it's warm, it's it's an amazing piece of work. Beautiful and artistic, just like Melvin's music. I mean, when I think of Melvin Melvin's Quiet Storm, I think of a quiet stream. Uh, it was long, smooth, romantic, uninterrupted, a mix of music that was so subtly segued that people could listen to the quiet storm and not realize that they were being taken on a ride, so to speak. Absolutely, and and I gotta also mention, Pat, that you are in our piece as well, talking about your experiences with listening to the quiet storm and Melvin Lindsay and just radio and what it was like when the quiet storm entered the um, conversation and why it was so important. Uh, so thank you for that too. And yeah, and, you know, Melvin was the kind of radio DJ who didn't talk a lot. He played that music. There weren't a lot mm -hmm. of conversations, but he just, it's how he was feeling. And he came into that studio and took you on a ride based on where he was. And that's what everybody said. You know, it's like, and, and there was a great bite where one person said in the piece, if Melvin was in love, you heard one song. If Melvin just broke up, you heard <laughs> something else. And <laughs> the thing that is so powerful, and I know, Pat, we both got our start in radio. I know that for me, part of the reason I couldn't do radio professionally was because I couldn't have the kind of freedom that Melvin had or Donnie Simpson has, where, you know, they can come in and play whatever they want. And they are the teachers, they're the instructors, and we are all learning and listening to these experts in musicianship, folks who know good music. And now it's programmed, right? And, you know, so few of the people who we hear actually have an opportunity to do their own thing. Um, and so that's what's lost in it. And for me, I had so much passion for creating uh, mixes and, and music. It was hard to go in and someone tell me <laughs> what to play. And so I'm sure that for Melvin, that also would have been very difficult. So he was really intentional about having the say-so in what he played. And uh, for Washingtonians, we know what a good Quiet Storm mix sounds like. You know, we know what song's supposed to follow, what artist and the vibe, <laughs> and it is a vibe and you cannot program that vibe. And that's what made it so special. It, it was an unbroken vibe. And that's part of what made it so special. And you mentioned format. Um, a lot of radio at the time was personality driven. Um, I could really date myself by going back and telling you um, about all the personalities who were on the air on black radio at the time. But when Melvin came along, uh, he took personnel, he really took it out. People loved Melvin Lindsay, he was the show, but the reason he, I think he was so phenomenal with The Quiet Storm was because he sort of took a, he, he stepped Love back and program. let the music uh, be the show. It was all about the music. You could listen to an entire hour of The Quiet Storm and never even know Melvin was there, often. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that's significant is the sound that he brought to WHUR, right? Because it was initially um, yeah. a mix of kind of talk radio, jazz, you know, there's some gospel programming. It was very politically active and involved in the community. It was, um, I, I wanna say the only black owned radio station at the time in Washington, DC. Um, although we had urban radio stations like WOL and, you know, and WKYS and, um, but there were still, Howard was like our precious jewel, right? And operated and owned by Howard University. And then Melvin enters with this incredible concept of slow jams and letting this music um, play. And it didn't always have to be R&B. It could be jazz. He he would play Sarah Vaughn, right? He played Phoebe Snow, who was kind of like a, a pop, R&B influence, um, Scott Jarrett, the image of the image of you, which is considered one of his standards, and we mentioned that in the piece. And Scott Jarrett was, you know, a jazz classic pianist. And this song was just—he was like the king of the B-side songs. It didn't have to be the most popular song, but did it fit the the vibe? Did it fit the mood? Did it uh, take you on the journey of the story he was trying to tell that night? Um, you know, and, and he just captured all of that so well. And a native Washingtonian, someone who was raised in this city and really understood how Washingtonians listen to music and our expectation for good music. Because we go, we go, go to this stuff, right? I mean, we're, we're all over the yeah. map there. 
it sort of happened at the right time, would you say? Uh, you know, on campus, uh, th those of us who were at historically black uh, universities at the time were, you know, re reawakening, if you if you will. There was a there was a racial reawakening. We were proud of being black, proud of expressing that. And at the same time, the quiet storm sort of gave everybody a chance to relax and and cool out from the stress of life and the times um, that those hours from seven to midnight were a time when you did not want to be interrupted. Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. I mean, it was escapism. Right. I mean, it was this other side of our black experience and here in Washington. And when you think about when he was on the air from um, coming out of racial unrest and moving into um, when DC was considered the murder capital of the world. You mm -hmm. know, there were all of these issues that we were dealing with in our city. But at seven o'clock, we escaped all of that and fell into love yeah. and yeah. imagination and it, it's escapism. And for a lot of us, it's still what we do. I mean, the quiet storm is still playing today. 96.3 still opens up with the quiet storm theme. And now it's 7.30, 7.30, let's turn on 96.3 and hear what the DJ's into tonight. What's the vibe tonight? What are they feeling tonight? Tracy, you're such a super fan. You actually have your own quiet storm remix. Yeah, I, I do. Is so, that right? <laughs> you know, I think that- Tell us, people. tell us about it. It's, I used to, de I say, I well, I still technically do DJ, but since I've had my daughter, um, she's kind of taken up all of my extra DJ time. But um, so I would do parties and clubs and stuff like that for friends. My favorite thing to do was definitely slow jam mixes. And so I would have these different categories of slow jam mixes that I did. And um, Melvin Lindsay was one of them. I did a dedication. I did two dedication mixes to Melvin Lindsay, one to Kevin Slow Jamming James and some that just kind of focused on my favorite parts of R&B music. But when you take on that kind of endeavor, what you have to do is research, you know, what were they listening to and, um, and why, and what was the vibe and what was the feeling. And when you put it out there into the world, like I did on my website where like, here's a Melvin Lindsay mix, you got to sit back, like, is this going to be okay? Or <laughs> what's going to happen for folks who take this <laughs> stuff seriously? They know if you know what you're talking about and if you don't know yes. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, some of my favorite mixes are ones that were inspired by the way he did what he did. And I know that there are a lot of folks who feel the same way. Now, the other side of all of this, um, besides music and what he created, is his tragic death and how he was taken from all of us so soon, you know, in his 30s. And he was just beginning this skyrocket of a, of a career. And so we look into that and we take a deep dive into what happened with um, with Melvin's death and, and how, how his loss is still felt by the folks in this city. And it is. Tracy, what do you want viewers to take away from this three-part series? Well, first of all, to learn some music history for folks who don't know that when WHOR says that we're the home of the original Quiet Storm because it's been duplicated in so many other markets, that we really are the home of the original Quiet Storm, that something magnificent was created here in Washington. And um, we also talk about how Melbourne's legacy is still lasting in this city. There's now a 24-hour quiet storm station that WHUR has started on one of its HD channels. He was just inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. Donnie Simpson nominated him. Donnie is in our piece and talks about that. Um, we hear from his family and they talk about his legacy and how he came into this show and, and, and what happened. And again, we talk about how we lost him. And I think a lot of folks will be amazed to hear um, what it was like in the 90s and what it's like now dealing with what Melvin was dealing with and how much all of that played a part in his artistry and who he was. And um, I just think that people are going to be, you know, taken on a journey that they're going to really enjoy and walk away feeling inspired. I know I did. You know, I just felt inspired. It's, it's, a, it's an inspiring piece to hear that this guy who started as an intern created something amazing that is still everlasting, you know, will always be a part of the fabric of this city and this country and the world. You know, folks listen to Melvin Lindsay all over the place. So, yeah. and, and listen to the quiet storm all over the place. So it, it um, 
you know, he's just, he's a really special person and we're thankful for everything that he did to pour into this city to help shape who we are and what we listen to and what we like. Well, we are so excited about it. We can't wait to see your work. Uh, and in fact, you can watch it right now. It's a three-part series. It's entitled Quiet Storm, Melodies, Moods, and Mixes of Melvin Lindsay. Three-part series uh, with our, our dear uh, colleague, Tracy Wilkins, uh, looking into this format that has been uh, copied around the country. It's, it's a very important piece of our uh, radio and media history here in the nation's capital. Tracy, thanks so much. And you can watch that three-part series right now on NBCWashington.com, on the NBC Washington app, on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Enjoy the show. Tracy, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you, Pat. And thank you to Tanil Gibson for her amazing work on these pieces. Enjoy all three pieces. You're going to love them.